Your project is almost due. Your client is eager to get into the suite to view your digital masterpiece, and it feels like there's not enough time in the day to get it all done. Unfortunately, how to gain more than 24 hours in a day is not one of the five tips. But learning how to apply these five tips will make more of the 24 hours in a day we do have. So, without further ado, Motion Templates is kicking it off for time saver tip number one. Motion Templates can save you a ton of time when it comes to creating cool graphics. But as much time as they save you, that's not the shortcut that we're going to focus on. I'm going to talk about how you can bypass opening up Motion to get to these digital delights. Motion templates can be accessed in Final Cut by going up to Sequence and then Add Master Template. This should look familiar. If you know what you're looking for, go to Final Cut's Generator pop-up menu. While in the viewer, simply click on it and choose your desired templates. As you can see, you need to be somewhat familiar with Motion's templates in order to know what to choose. If that doesn't work for you, then go to Effects and then Master Templates. Or you can even find them in the browser. Either way, Motion has provided plenty of ways for you to open Motion templates in Final Cut. A swap edit can become your best friend if all your clips in the timeline are laid out in the proper order and it appears one clip needs to be moved somewhere else in the sequence. The swap edit will not only move a desired clip or clips to somewhere else on the timeline, but it will also fill in the empty void left by moved clips, thus leaving your piece uninterrupted. To achieve this technique, click on the clip you wish to move. In my case, I have four clips from the Lone Peak Productions stock footage library. My last clip is a time-lapse sunrise. All right, if you don't want the clip to break another clip in half, make sure the snap feature is on. It will automatically line the clip up to an edit point when the cursor gets close enough. Now that I have my clip selected, all I have to do is move it to its new location. Hold down the Option key, the Selection Tool arrow changes into an arrow pointing sideways, or if you place the cursor on the clip, a downward facing arrow. Release the mouse button and your selected clip will move from its old spot to the new one. All clips to the right or left will move to compensate for the newly placed clip, as shown. Have you ever spent a lot of time adjusting audio levels on multiple clips only to find out that your audio is not loud enough? Or the opposite? Trying to increase or decrease the levels can be tedious and annoying, especially when you have a ton of clips. Never fear, Final Cut fills your pain. For a cool time saver, select the desired audio, jockey your mouse up to modify, then down to, you guessed it, audio. Here we have a lot of useful options. If you choose, say, plus three decibels, it will do just that. Deleting a pesky clip that is clustered in the middle of other clips can be somewhat tedious. The ripple delete feature can save you the trouble of selecting and moving all the clips you want to fill in the gap created by the deleted clip. A ripple edit can be accomplished by selecting the clip you wish to delete in the timeline. Click on the forward delete key, or you can right click on the clip you wish to delete. Select ripple delete from the drop down menu. If the ripple delete does not work, check to see if any of the tracks are locked or if clips are above or below the unwanted clip. Moving the mouse up to the browser window to click on a transition just to slip and slide the mouse back down to add a transition is silly when you don't have to. This tip will showcase two worthy transition alternatives. Click in between the two clips that you wish to add a transition to. 
press the Command and T keys. Or you can right click in between the two clips and select the Add Transition option in the drop down menu. These two options will automatically place your default transition, which will most likely be the cross dissolve, in between the two clips. If you would like your default transition to be something else, such as an additive dissolve, right click on the additive dissolve transition in the effects section of your browser window. Select set default transition, and as you can see, additive dissolve is now underlined, and you're ready to go. These time savers are techniques that can be used several times in an edit. We may not have discovered the secret to time travel, but now you should have some extra time on your hands. Tips on how to use that time will be left up to you. I'm Steven Smith, and be sure to check out my new training DVD, Money Making Graphics and Effects, at creativecowtraining.net.